How many wheel rides are here? So don't lean on that. If that falls over, it'll teach you how to dance faster than you want to. Uh, a wheel ride is a person that builds wheels for wagons or buggies or whatever you want a wheel for. So where do we start? I'm, I'm doing muscle making here, lifting this up and down. This is an axle out of a wagon. If you walk around and look at these wagons, you'll see it. So then the next thing, this is called a skein. And the skein fits on the end of the axle. And you bolt the skein on. So now you're ready to make a wheel and get it started. This is a hub. But that new hub replaced this hub. So next you have to have spokes. So, if you look at this, you can see one side is narrower at the top than the other. And the reason we want to make it that way is so we get a dish. And if you're standing in the white shirt and look straight across this tire, you'll see that it has a little dish in it. And the reason you want a dish is so if you're driving your team and accidentally you run over your brother or your sister, you won't break a spoke. And if you break a spoke, you have a problem. So now we have all these spokes fitted in here. And when we get done, girls like this, it's called a spider. Okay. So now we need to make the ends of these perfect from here to here, all the way around. So I'm going to use a smaller spoke here. The first thing you need is a pointer, and it's like an old pencil sharpener, which probably none of you have ever seen. All right, so now I have my uh, bevel on the front, so now I want to make a tenon. This is a tenon cutter, and you put it in here, and you cut it to get the desired length here. So now we start to work with the fellies. The wooden part of the wheel is called a felly. And you, some people lay the spider on top of the fellies and measure it that way. I, uh, I don't do it that way. I'm, I'm a perfectionist is what's wrong with me. And I mathematically locate those spoke holes. Drill the holes. Now we, we've got a, everything ready to go. So now it, building buggy wheels is easy because if you've had Wheaties on your you know cereal this morning, milk on your cereal, you're you're tough enough when these are in the holes that you can pull them, and that's the reason they're round, so they slip into the holes in the, of the felly. And once you get your fellies put on, you try and get uh, a felly gap. I don't see yeah, Here's one right here. This is where the two fellies come together, and we call it a felly gap. So now we're ready to go. So we take what we call a traveler, and you measure all the way around the wooden part of the wheel. Let's just say it's 12 feet around. So now you need to make your tire and you put it through a roller and you make it in this case 44 inches in diameter and then you cut the, the, the tire so it's three inches shorter in circumference than the wheel. Well now you say how do we get that on and uh, so you heat it. You need to get it to 600 degrees. How do you know when it's 600 degrees? Have you got tender skin? Put it on there. If your finger sizzles, you know it's hot. But you don't know it's 600 degrees. So if you have a fireplace at home, you see uh, stuff. can't think about it right now. Not suet, black stuff. Dead. 
anyway, the, the black stuff forms on it. When you put it, I put mine on uh, pallets and heat it up that way. And when the soot, there we go, burns off, it instantly turns gray, gray, gray. That's when you know it's 600 degrees. So now you have three hefty people lift that tire with special tools out of the fire and set it on top of the wagon wheel. And if you've done your homework right and you've expanded the metal, it should drop right off. And if it doesn't, you need to go visit your math teacher because you screwed up somewhere in the measure. Okay, now that that's on there, you all of a sudden have another problem. Your wheel's on fire. And if that burns, you lost the reason for putting the tire on. So you must quickly, either with a hose or a bucket, put water evenly around it. Just evenly so it shrinks evenly. And then I tap it with a hammer so it seats better. Okay, now my wheel is complete. So I have to put a boxing in it. This, this gray looking thing is a boxing for this skein. And that's actually what runs on the tire. Here, here's a miniature one right here. This is the boxing and here is the yeah, whatever that is, hub. So, okay. Now, what we have to grease this hub, and a lot of times, you know, you couldn't go into your closest uh, convenience store and buy a bucket of axle grease. So you could use pine tar, or you can use uh, tallow from rendering a pig or whatever, something that is uh, slick and and then you can put ashes in there and uh, depending on the area you're in you probably have to re-grease those wheels every other day they, they didn't have uh, what do you call turnpikes and special highways it was mostly dirt roads and dirt and metal don't get along good any questions did any of you bring me a cookie? You ate it already. Doggone you. Tell, tell us again how you got the wood to bend around all the stuff. Okay. Spots. Good question. And a woman asked, what the hell is wrong with you? Uh, I buy all my spokes and all my fellies from an Amish guy back in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. You tell them you have 44 inch diameter wheels. When they get to your house in Lamar, Colorado, they're bent already to 44 inches. These buggy spokes, I can make them. I'll pass this around, just roll it in your hand, but you must give it back. Do I have to whack with it, whack me with this? Oh! Well, you have to do it quick. Anyway, they're actually egg shaped and the part of the egg goes to the outside so it gives the wheel more strength going around the curves. I've never had anybody ask that. First for everything. Yeah, yeah, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. How often do you soak them the fall Lindsay oil? I... I don't do that. If you think about this, the wheels were made back east, and when they got here, they shrank because the sap got out of them. I, I don't, if you ordered wheels from me, I'd say, well, how soon could you do them? I said, well, it takes three to six months, and that's so my fellies and spokes have a chance to get acclimatized to this area. But as you notice, there's tire bolts here too. So 